Why did the DNC just pick Tim Walls, the governor of Minnesota, as Kamala Harris's VP when most people probably didn't know who he was? And guess what, Andrew? He used to live in China. Whoa! Listen, guys, let's just run the clips. Like all regular people I grew up with in the heartland, J.D. studied at Yale, <laughs> had his career funded by Silicon Valley billionaires, and then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. And I got to tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. So there's no doubt that one of the first issues that anyone will think of is the issue they think of when they're at their kitchen table trying to pay their bills, which is how is the economy treating them? So there is no question whatsoever that that is an important issue, which we have been in the process of addressing. We still need to do more. Boom, there he is, man. That's his announcement speech. And I got to say, he came out swinging. Yeah, I, the vibe is nice right now. I thought he was the right pick, but David... A lot of people think Kamala Harris picked him, or a lot of people think Donald Trump picked J.D. Vance as his running mate, but really what's going on and what are we about to explain? Basically, there is a DNC, which is a national committee. There's a RNC, and they make these decisions based off political calculus. So we know, guys, this doesn't have anything to do with being Asian. Well, actually, it does because Tim Waltz, just like Kanye, used to live in China back in the day. But um, I'll say this. There is a hidden calculus behind everything, and we are going to do our best to break it down for you guys in simple terms today. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Last Sauce at SmileLastSauce.com. This is the New York Times article that says he stands out in a sea of elites and strivers, basically saying this guy is the fun Midwestern uncle legitimately that every politician tries to portray themselves as, but probably isn't in reality. So he's you're, everybody's saying he really walks the walk when it comes to to the Midwestern dad vibes, right? Like this guy's the real deal. He coached a high school championship football team. Yeah, I mean, he's got photos like hugging pigs and stuff like that. And just the fact that he used to teach in China in 1989, that's actually something really Midwestern people do. Yeah, he's married to a teacher too. Anyways, guys, we're gonna get into the reasons why the DNC picked Tim Walls and why it was probably the best decision to a company. Kamala Harris. Too. Honestly, it reminds me of like the Raptors picking up Scotty Barnes in 2022, where I was like, man, what a good draft pick. Um, Andrew, here is a photo of him getting a DUI, to be fair, when he is uh when he was very young. Hey, and you know what? That's real. A lot of people got DUIs. <laughs> he, uh, he does look like Jim Gaffigan and Warren Buffett. Yeah, I think so. And also, like, he's just got those white eyebrows. He's only 60 years old, which actually isn't that old, but I think he looks a little bit older than he is. Well, he looks about like 75. Yeah, he looks like a friendly Dick Cheney. Um, he is a Minnesota Evangelical Lutheran. If you guys know about Minnesota, that is a very Minnesotan uh, religious identity, don't you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I would say, listen, I'm not super, like, I didn't know who the governor of Minnesota was at the time. So, you know, I wasn't one of his followers. I would say most people on the coastlines unless you're super tapped into politics, had not known Tim Walls before this, but everybody's just hearing about him. He's the new guy, so everybody's consuming all this information. All right, number one, guys, here's the political calculus, and we're going to break it down. Kamala had to wing swing state votes in the Midwest. Here are the states that matter. These are the swing states. So if she would have picked Pete Buttigieg due to his identity, it was going to be too many first things already because she's Jamaican black and Indian, and she's the, the going to be the president. So if she picked Buttigieg, it's just too much going on, right? Sure. I, I guess yeah, I could see what they're saying. And uh, uh, yeah, Josh Shapiro, Andrew, he was the governor of Pennsylvania, which has the city of Philadelphia in it, right? But here's the thing. Uh, Josh Shapiro, he's also very young. He acts like Obama, but he's actually very, very uh, pro-Israel. Mm. So that was going to complicate things for her again. Right, right. And and maybe he doesn't seem like a, a good old Midwestern guy. You know? Well, maybe, he seems more like a coastal elite. Maybe a little bit of a city slicker. Right, right, right. So they want the ruddy Warren Buffett, like, I know how to, like, fish something. I know how to shoot a can in the backyard with a gun look. Yeah. I mean, 
yeah, he also kind of looks like John McCain now I think about it. Like, he just has that, like, kind of American dad, I watch football vibes, but I, like, also make cheesy jokes to my son. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, he looks like a Democrat from 30 years ago, to be honest. Like, not maybe the modern-day iteration yeah. of the party. Um, I'll say this. What, when you are trying to expand your voter base, you don't want to double down on states that you've already won. I would say that Tim Waltz uh, opens it up to states that Kamala maybe was weak in. Right, right, right. I mean, you're talking about Michigan. You're talking about Wisconsin. You're talking about uh, North Dakota, North Carolina. These states, like, they... I think there's a lot of Tim Waltz in your community if you live in you these mean states. people who visually look no, like No, people Tim who Waltz. act like this. Like, this is a nice... He seems like a nice dad. I don't know what but, the dirt is on him. Maybe he has no dirt. Maybe he hasn't been corrupt. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Point number two, Andrew. <laughs> Democrats wanted to avoid looking super stereotypical woke, mm. right? Basically, this is a chart, Andrew, from a recent political newspaper in Japan breaking down the things that white Democrats and white Republicans like. Yeah, it's hilarious. It, it, it did. Uh, so, I mean, just from a... From a racial standpoint, now you have a black woman who is also half Asian, half Indian, South, half South Asian. And then now you got this super nice white dad and like super dad vibes. So I'm saying there's a good balance there, right? And I think that's what they were going for. No, it's like Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. One guy shoots threes, one guy protects the rim. And I'll say this, Andrew, he was acting super white talking about Bruce Springsteen. Let's contrast that with Kamala's first announcement with Megan the Stallion. Right. Like, so you know what I mean? Because they probably, Andrew, the Dems were probably like, damn, we just did something that everybody thought we would do. Right. Let's do something that people would not think we would do. All right. Um, point number three, Andrew. Both tickets are splitting about 120 years of age. But interestingly enough, with Trump, it goes 80 for him, 40 for J.D. Vance. Uh, Kamala and Tim Waltz are both 60. Right. But, and, I'm saying but, they, but it doesn't present that way. No, and I would say Tim Waltz presents as a 70-year-old and Kamala presents more as a 50-year-old. So that would be how it is viewed. Um, here's the thing about Trump and J.D. Vance. First of all, I don't think Trump actually personally wanted to pick jd vance yeah i, I don't think, think he likes how ideological he no, is to be i honest. think the rnc picked jd vance for donald trump uh which is logical but also i don't think jd vance seemed to have the good chemistry but it seems like kamala and tim waltz right now might look more like a pair like might be more on the same page right now yeah like a odd couple but it like works yeah um I think that, like you said, people, they want people who identify with Tim Waltz to feel comfortable with the ticket. Yeah. Point and a lot of, by the way, I think a lot of people who identify with Tim Waltz as a personality of his generation, even with his look, I think a lot of those people can even vote Republican and then swing to the Democrats. Like, I think he does appeal to a lot of conservatives. Uh, you're saying a lot of centrists. Yeah, a lot, a lot of centrists. Or a lot of neutral people oh, yeah. that could go either way. Or a lot of moderate conservatives, yeah. Uh, point number four, J.D. Vance has a lot of famous quotables, or you could say infamous quotables recently, because he is an author from Yale, and he quote-unquote had that hillbilly background, even though some people are questioning it. But it's true that J.D. Vance has a lot of quotables out on the internet right now. Mm -hmm. However, Tim Walsh basically called him a fake blue-collar guy, saying he's not a real blue-collar guy. He went to Yale. I never went to elite institutions. I don't even care about power. I just got picked. I'm the true blue collar guy. Right, right, right. Now, by the way, I do I'm not defending his background, but you can still be from a blue collar background and end up at Yale. But regardless, it was a pretty good dig at him. Yeah, yeah. I think the truth is JD Vance was exposed to the hillbilly lifestyle more than other people at Yale were, but not more than like people actually living in it every day who will never see the halls of elite global power. Sure. Point number five, Andrew. He, uh, Tim Walsh is actually a really good speaker. He uses hyper simple language and he's a strong debater. Whereas Kamala being a lawyer is famous for spewing random word salad. Yes, yes, guys, let's be honest. We've all seen a clip of Kamala saying something that doesn't really make sense. Not in a Joe Biden, Donald Trump doesn't make sense way, but just almost like, like she, you know, she's trying to like use legalese. Yeah, right? like she, yeah, she's trying to use the legal terms because she's a lawyer. She was a prosecutor, so she got to like think of all these different ways to be roundabout. But Tim Waltz seems like a straight shooter, and he's going to use uh, verbiage and like vocabulary that everybody can understand. And 
he, listen, he used to coach a football team. So he knows how to command a crowd. And I think, I'm not going to lie, guys, I'm playing up the football team thing because that's something that none of these other candidates did. He knows how to speak to young guys and get them riled up and lead them. He is much more directly from the core of the bases that people want to appeal to in this upcoming election. Yeah, I mean, he's also from the military, too. Point number six, Andrew. They are about to have a Midwest showdown between the VPs. So basically, everybody's saying that everybody's sort of spoken for on the presidential side, right? But the VPs are going to make the huge difference. And he said there's two different types of VPs. This is what an uh, expert analyst said. You've got Scott Irish, which is what I believe J.D. Vance is, versus Minnesotan. And these are two different types because Minnesotans are typically more neutral left. They elected Jesse Ventura. Like they're either independent or slightly left. Whereas Scott's Irish, more your Appalachian Midwestern is very right. Like, in terms of archetype. These are Midwestern archetypes. Interesting. Yeah, because there is a lot of Scots-Irish, like, bloodlines, I guess, in more in the Appalachians. Guys, we're is, talking about different types of white people here. That's interesting. No, but I'm so, obviously, these political analysts, they understand all these hyper-nuanced yeah. sub-tribes of white that, let's be honest, a lot of minorities, we'd just be like, what? But, yeah, these are real things. They exist. We've, we've traveled in this area before. And um, point number seven. It goes to show you that the Democrats are probably running, are throwing everything at the wall to beat Trump. Because it's very unlikely that even if Kamala wins, she's going to win another four because she's going to be viewed as, a, as an extension of Biden. It's also highly unlikely that Tim Waltz would run for president if they do win, if he does win as VP. Mm. So basically, it's like, I think that basically they're doing everything they can to st stop Trump's last shot, potentially enacting Project 2025 whether you guys believe that or not, because it looks like the pattern will switch back right for sure. Because if you look at the presidency since 1960, uh, it's basically been switching back every eight years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like just alternating between parties. Right, right, right. Yeah. Unless, unless it, Kamala happens to win and they do a really good job, then I guess it's possible that Democrats would run again would well i'm not saying they wouldn't run again but it's just unlikely because literally right. nobody's won more than eight years in a row that's true um i'll say this i do think it's interesting andrew that he's been to china like 20 times yeah, yeah. explain that explain no, no. It's so, so basically so uh he did a year teaching at Fosan number one high school in 1989 and since then you know especially back then andrew they're treating the white guys so good especially the folksy white guys with all the folksy chinese people he went back like 10 other times mm. so he actually has a very interesting perspective on china he said you know i love chinese people i don't agree with the chinese government but i see the chinese people as very very human to me which is i think very different than a lot of other politicians that dehumanize both the people and the government wow Tim Walls, he'll uh, say that we're a other human being. Wow, that is, thank you so much. Like, no other politician ever say that about people living in China. So, Tim, thank you that you see us as humans and that you do not see Chinese people as, just like, as yeah. adversary and nope. enemies. They just don't see us as evil Nemoidians. All right, let's get into the comment section, guys. First of all, by now, you've heard a little bit of Tim Waltz. I'm learning about him, so let us know any other facts that you know about him, facts, please. And then, uh, yeah, let us know what you think about him because I, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Kamala, to be honest, but I kind of like this Tim guy. Right, right, right. Real quick, here are some quick comments on him. Somebody said, stop calling him a progressive. He's more like a centrist. So basically, they're still arguing about where to, how to brand him because at this point, and we're so close to the election, it ain't even about the truth. It's about the branding. Yeah. Um, some people said he's like Joe Biden, 20 years younger, which is kind of like a center left type of guy, which it, it seems like it checks out based off what I've seen. Doesn't um, seem like a bad move for the DNC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody said that he's not, I'm just glad he's not an elite. He doesn't seem like he's obsessed with power or obsessed with money. Mm -hmm. Like he literally just cares. Yeah, he's not corrupted yet. <laughs> right, right, right. He actually reminds me of my citizenship teacher, Mr. Doherty, who was the leader of the National Guard in Washington State for a while. Shout out to Mr. Doherty. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, listen, guys, some people are going to base, vote based on party, right? A lot of people are already aligned with whatever aligns with their values, their top priorities, or pocketbook on either side. However, there is a good portion of people who are undecided. And I would say, Andrew, in my opinion, for the undecided people, this was a very strong pick 
in favor of the Democrats. Like I, they, they, they I, made a good read. I think this was a this was a pretty good draft pick, man. This was like uh, who is this drafting man? Like just somebody who just fit in right away. Like uh, I don't want to say deer and fox. Or, or like a, say, yeah, I mean somebody who fits right away. I, I was going to say Jalen Brown and Tatum together, but that actually took a while to materialize. Right, right. But anyways, basically. I think this was the right pick, you know, given that, to be honest, I had no idea who the VP for Kamala Harris was going to be. And I didn't actually know a lot of them. I just knew like Pete Buttigieg and a couple others, but like this guy solid, man. But, but is it at this point just to win an election? Because if the Dems still continue to be soft on crime and give away a ton of money, they're still going to be the scarecrows basically lacking a brain, Andrew. And if Republicans still just listen to greedy companies and divide everybody with like, kind of like mean or de divisive speech, they'll still be the Tin Man having no heart, mm. regardless of who they put as these figureheads, right? Like I'm saying as an entire apparatus, like you're saying the DNC picked Tim Waltz, the RNC picked JD Vance to win an election. But if they continue both as a party to be the Scarecrow and Tin Man, I mean, I guess the old stereotypes will just still hold true. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll see, guys. Maybe you hate what Democratic policies have done so far, and no matter even if you, Tim Waltz is uh, endearing and charming as a Midwestern football coach dad, that it doesn't matter to you. Or maybe this looks hopeful to you. You know, maybe you're like, oh, hey, I was kind of looking for to see if something else could inspire me because maybe I'm not super inspired by, you know, everything else that the Democrats are offering, you know? Or maybe you're just like, yo, Trump all the way. I'm, I'm rolling with my guy, Trump, guys. Uh, I think that, you know, ultimately, everybody wants something better for America. There's obviously so many different ways to go about it. It kind of reminds me, well, the quote from the show Fallout on Amazon Prime that I just watched is a really pretty good show. Um, Everybody wants to save the world, but nobody can agree on how. Also, there's a quote uh, attributed to Winston Churchill or John Adams. If you're not a liberal at 20, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative at 40, you have no brain or you have no money. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below. What do you think about the Tim Walls pick? Uh, any opinions? What's your first impressions? You don't got to be an expert on them, but let us know. Hey, man, there's a hidden calculus behind everything. I can, if I can analyze different Zoom strobles versus this cushioning system in a sneaker, I'm going to apply it to anything. Until next time, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. We out. Peace.